Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. It's two days before Christmas. Let me wish everyone here a very Merry Christmas. I know you could be a thousand and one places right now, including the mall or by your Christmas tree or under the mistletoe wherever you are, right? Grab a loved one. Let me wish both of you a very Merry Christmas. Now let's just have some thoughts on what's going to happen in boxing in 2017 to 2018. Why the two-year range? Because we're discussing that world of make-believe, which is boxing. Right? We're in the middle of an ongoing saga where two of the world's best fighters, Gennady Golovkin, Saul Alvarez, told us, the boxing fan, that they wanted to fight each other. Right? You can imagine, in the boxing community, many fans like me were excited. We were like, hey, that looks like a great fight. Wow. A lot of bullets flying from both directions. A lot of power. Both of these guys are two of the best punchers pound for pound in the sport. But of course, you know that even though you are prepared to buy tickets, right? even though countless promoters would jump at the opportunity to televise the fight, even though both guys had shares of the middleweight title at the time. We were told by Oscar De La Hoya that the fight, curiously, wouldn't be happening for several months. Right? Does, does anyone know who Canelo is fighting next? Is, is Canelo really that busy where he can't pick up a few million dollars fighting one of the best in the sport pound for pound? Does Canelo not think that beating Golovkin, who's currently unbeaten, wouldn't help his legacy? So let me say, because we're dealing with boxing, right, an insane sport, a sport where if you were seated in a theater and you heard the storyline, you would get up and say, you know what, this is just not believable enough. Right? Too much suspension of disbelief here. Right? Because we're dealing in boxing, I can't even make a video on what to look for in 2017 because who knows? I can mention a great fight like Golovkin against Canelo, a fight we all want, and then some promoter someplace will say, hey, I want that fight too, but it's not going to happen for a year or a year and a half. Right? My guy isn't really a middleweight even though he's wearing the middleweight belt, right? Ridiculous. Even though he weighs super middleweight before some of his fights. Absolutely ridiculous. So, because it's boxing, I'm giving a two-year time frame here. Now, before I go further, let me just say this. Let me award someone the Jackass of the Year Award. Right? This person has really earned the red cup for the jackass in boxing for 2016. And that's Alexander Povetkin. Lucas Brown gets honorable mention. But Lucas, believe it or not, somehow Alexander Povetkin beat you out for the award. Let me just say this. To me, the holy grail in boxing is the heavyweight title, right? I'm biased. I'm not fair, right? To me, there's the heavyweight champion, and then there's everyone else, right? I can name you some heavyweight champions from the 70s when I was a little kid, right? If you said to me, hey, who was the welterweight champion? Even though you had some great ones, I'd have to think about it, right? It wouldn't roll off the tongue. So let's just say you're a challenger. You're not even the champion. 
and the champion is crossing the Atlantic to fight you in your backyard. Now, if you're Alexander Povetkin, you're such a loon that you go and use meldonium. Folks, these substances, understand, you have to actually try to find them to use them. We're not talking about Tylenol, where a boxer can say, you know what, I had a headache. Oh, damn, did that tablet have Tylenol in it? Did it have acetaminophen? Right? We're not talking about caffeine, where, you know, someone says, oh, man, I... You know, you're telling me this Coke that I had has caffeine in it? No, we're talking about exotic drugs, back alley drugs. Drugs where you have to have a discussion with your pharmacist. So meldonium, the same drug that KO'd Maria Sharapova, right? KO'd her, knocked her out of competition, got her disqualified. That's the same drug that Pervetkin took, at least according to drug tests, that caused his title fight against Deontay Wilder to get canceled. Right? Let me just say, Alexander, you earned this. Let me tell you, too, about boxing. Deontay Wilder, for all of his preparation, didn't get paid for the fight, right? Because boxing's an event-based business. These promoters are really just taking money from the folks who paid to see the fight and the television outlets that are televising the fight, and then they give some of it to the boxer. Well, guess what? When there's no fight, when you don't have anyone in the arena who paid for the fight, when you don't have a TV outlet televising the non-event, people don't get paid. There's a lawsuit right now. Wilder was supposed to get a little bit more than $4 million for the fight. Right? Instead, his jackass of an opponent used meldonium. Now, as if that's not bad enough, Right? Think about it. Think about the level of disrespect. The heavyweight title. You're fighting at home. And then you're taking Meldonia. And then we get the ridiculous explanation. That Meldonia was legal the year before. And that maybe some leftover Meldonia from the year before was still in Alexander Povetkin's system months later. Come on now. Well, it gets even worse than that. So then Povetkin loses that title shot, right? Because he couldn't pass the drug test. So then he's back in line to get another title shot. You had a former champion, Bermain Stavern, who was going to travel to fight Povetkin in Povetkin's backyard. And, of course, before that fight, Povetkin tests positive for Osterine. Right, folks, again, you're not getting Osterine in, let's say, your cough syrup. You have to go looking for it. Right? Look it up online. You're going to find several steroid sites that talk about Osterine as a way to beat a drug test while juicing. Right? You mean to tell me that Povetkin failed a second drug test in the same calendar year? It's even worse than that. At this point, I'm expecting the brother to you know, do a mea culpa, right? I'm expecting the brother to come forward and say, you know what, I messed up, man. Well, what was I thinking? I apologize to boxing. I, you know, I've made mistakes. I'm under a lot of stress. Please forgive me, right? No, he doesn't throw himself at your mercy. Instead, he makes the claim that Bermain Stavern was out of shape, and that's why Bermain Stavern didn't go forward with the fight. All I can say is, what a jackass. Right? What a jackass. All right. Now, if I would have told you a year ago 
that the UK would leave the EU. That Donald Trump would actually beat Jeb Bush and others for the GOP nomination and then would beat Hillary Clinton in the general election to win the presidency of the United States. I would have been viewed as crazy. I would have been viewed as foolish. Right? Well, with a nod to the great Steve Jobs. Stay hungry. Stay foolish. Right? Before I get into betting on boxing, let me just say, right now the world economy is such a scam. I need to have you Google gold manipulation and silver manipulation. Nothing I tell you about any bet in the world of sports can give you a better chance of winning than does investing in gold and silver right now. Right? If you trust your local fiat currency, you need to really wonder which one of us is foolish, right? Just food for thought. Let me also say too, in cryptocurrency, Bitcoin on fire. I would also look at Monero and Dash, cryptos I've talked about here online. Let me also say Zcash took a beating when it first came out. Look at it now. It's on the way back. Right? Before you think about any sports bets or sport outcomes, <clears throat> do yourself a favor and at least research right? gold and silver investing and the cryptocurrencies I've mentioned. Now, let's just talk about this crazy world we're in. The heavyweight division. You know, it's my understanding that when two guys fight, Usually, one guy wins and one guy loses. When I see a guy who's unbeaten late in his career, I have to ask myself the question of whether or not that guy's been fighting elite competition. Right? Because understand, boxing's not a sports league. Everyone doesn't fight everyone else. Right? Some of these guys are cherry-picking opponents, aren't they? Now let's look at the heavyweight division. I'll buy one or two guys who are unbeaten. Right? You're telling me that you have multiple champions who are unbeaten in the same division? Who have they been fighting? I'm going to name some names here. You just think to yourself as I name the name. Who was his toughest opponent? Was that opponent world class at the time he fought them? Okay, Deontay Wilder, unbeaten champion. Joseph Parker, unbeaten champion. Anthony Joshua, Unbeaten champion. Lucas Brown. Former unbeaten champion stripped after a failed drug test. All I can say is, gee, how can you have four guys who've had the belt who are all unbeaten in the same weight class? A friend came up to me the other day and said, hey, this is the WWE. You know, I wanted to say to him, hey, don't insult the WWE. There they actually fight each other. Right? In boxing, somehow, champions during their reigns can go into witness protection. So, with this group, let me just say, and it's a crazy thought. In my opinion, the best heavyweight in the world, not named Klitschko, is the cruiserweight champion, Oxlander Usyk. 
Now, I think Klitschko beats Anthony Joshua. I don't think that's going to be a pretty fight, folks. Right? I, As I've said here online, I'm not even sure if Joshua gets back in the ring. Because Lord knows he'll be paid for his misery. But I think Vladimir Klitschko beats Anthony Joshua. I do believe Andy Ruiz, who I thought beat Joseph Parker, shocked someone. Because I don't think people understand how good Andy Ruiz is. But in 2017, I am expecting Usyk to realize that the lights are a little bit brighter one floor up at heavyweight. And then to start taking out these guys one by one. Right? Many of these guys are unproven. Let's downshift to the middleweight division. You know the division where Golovkin's supposed to be fighting Canelo, but they're keeping us waiting and waiting and waiting. So now he's going to fight a tougher opponent. That's right, I said tougher. Danny Jacobs. Folks, he's tougher than Canelo. I'd take Jacobs over Canelo if the two guys fought. First of all, Jacobs is a natural middleweight. Right? He's not a visitor to the weight class. He lives in the weight class. He's a champion in the weight class. Right? There's no... You know, his people aren't saying, we'll fight Golovkin in 18 months. There's none of that nonsense. Right? He has a shot at Golovkin. He's taking it. He's a much better athlete with much better foot speed than Saul Alvarez. Right? Much better foot speed. And he's fought the bigger man. Right? How was Kid Chocolate able to make 160 pounds? Jacobs took him out early. Now, I believe this is one of the toughest fights Golovkin could have made. But understand who Golovkin is. Golovkin wants to be great. Right? He's that guy who wants to leave his signature on the dotted line after he retires. When we think back, like we think back about Floyd Mayweather and we say, you know what? This part of the middleweight division's history was the Golovkin era. So Golovkin, he's not afraid to fight Canelo. He's not afraid to fight Danny Jacobs. I think it's a tough fight. Very tough fight. I'm going to give the nod to Golovkin because of some lingering doubts I have about Danny Jacobs' chin. Right? Jacobs was down to Sergio Mora. Right? He was on the canvas in that fight. Jacobs got stopped by Dimitri Pirog. But let's just say I won't be the most shocked man if Danny Jacobs pulls the upset. You need to circle this fight. Golovkin, Jacobs, that's one of the best fights of the year. Now what I'm going to say next is going to be critical Right? It's going to be controversial to Manny. Whoever wins the Golovkin-Jacobs fight, I think, beats Canelo. Let's talk about the light heavyweight division. Look, I think Andre Ward's a great guy. I do. I think he's great for the sport. If and when he fights Kovalev again, I think Kovalev beats him again. Right? I know there's some esteemed members of the boxing community, Adam Booth, for example, who believes that Ward beat Kovalev the first time. I'm not buying it. The fight I saw was a straight-up robbery. Right? Ward's second half was better than Ward's first half, but <laughs> let's just say Kovalev's uncut. He, you know, certainly wins the 10th round. I thought the last six rounds of that fight, let's say 4-2 Ward. Okay? Great. First six rounds, I'd say it's at least a 5-1 for Kovalev, right? I think Kovalev should be considered the best at light heavyweight. Were I Andre Ward, and I understand there's a rematch clause, but were I Andre Ward, 
I would politely leave the division. Right? If there's a liquidated damages provision in the contract, pay it. Right? Years from now, all anyone is going to remember if Andre leaves the division and then takes over at Cruiser is that Andre Ward took over at Cruiser after beating Kovalev at light heavyweight. Understand, Kovalev's only lost once officially, right? Many believe Darnell Boone beat him, but that's another story. Kovalev's only lost once officially, right? Andre has that feather in his cap. The person who could unring that feather is Andre Ward himself if he gives us the rematch, and the rematch confirms what many of us already know. That he doesn't match up well with Kovalev. He doesn't have the answers for Kovalev's jab. Even getting inside on Kovalev is harder than it first appeared. Let's talk about Super Mill. And I know the video is at 20 minutes already. I'll speed it up. You know, James DeGale, in my opinion, might be the best technician in the sport of boxing. Right? DeGale is really underrated, even though he's the champ at 168 pounds. Now he's in a unification match. Look, I know Badu Jack is down with the Mayweathers and is getting some great advice behind the scenes. He's not going to beat James DeGale. I like James DeGale here. Let me say this too. If it's announced that Golovkin is going to fight James DeGale, count me among those who'll take James DeGale in that match. Right? Keep an eye on James DeGale. I think he's underrated. Let's talk about welterweight. This might be among the more controversial statements I make. I think Keith Thurman beats Danny Garcia and then loses if the fight's made to Manny Pacquiao, right? Pacquiao, look, I know I took Floyd over Pacquiao. I know I've criticized Pacquiao. I know I've said here online, in my opinion, Pacquiao didn't win any of the Juan Manuel Marquez fights. But Pacquiao is sudden. Pacquiao hits hard. Pacquiao's a southpaw. We already saw Keith Thurman against a sudden fighter, Showtime Sean Porter. And I thought Thurman struggled in that match. Struggled. Well, Manny is a southpaw. The angles are a little bit different. Manny now has the benefit of that film. Right? A few times, Sean Porter came in straight, got hit, and stood up on the way in. If Manny could avoid those mistakes, I don't see why Manny Pacquiao can't beat Keith Thurman. Let me say, there, there's been talk about Manny against Terrence Crawford or against Vassal Lomachenko. If I'm Manny and I'm walking around at 147, why do I want to lose weight to fight tougher opponents? Right? Manny... <laughs> You've been welterweight king before. If Keith Thurman beats Danny Garcia, hell, if Danny Garcia beats Keith Thurman, I think Manny Pacquiao can handle either guy. Let's talk about 154. I don't have a lot to say about it, except that I expect Arislandy Lara to completely embarrass Yuri Foreman when the two guys fight next month. Yuri Foreman used to be a champion. He's entering the ring against the wrong guy, right? Lara, to me, is one of the uncrowned champions at 154. I also like Demetrius Andre in the division. I think Yuri Foreman is biting off much more than he could chew. Let's segue to super featherweights. I think Carl Frampton, again, beats Leo Santa Cruz. I have a video up on that fight here online. I think Frampton should pick up where he left off. Frampton's accuracy, Frampton's power, it's admirable. But I do believe that if the winner of that fight 
fights Vasil Lomachenko, I believe that guy loses. I like Lomachenko against either Carl Frampton or Leo Santa Cruz. Finally, let me say this. Junior Welter, in my opinion, there's really only one name you need to know. And that's the great Terrence Crawford. Right? Crawford has already called out Danny Garcia on social media. Right? I believe Crawford understands that if he were to face either Thurman or Danny Garcia at 147 pounds, he'd have a damn good chance of winning. But there is a fighter, I think, gives Thurman, excuse me, gives Crawford problems. And that's the older guy, Manny Pacquiao. Why? Because Pacquiao is so unorthodox. Jumps around the ring, he's far away, he, you know, knows how to move his head, he's moving his head all the time. That I think that might throw off Crawford who I'll concede has the benefit of looking at the film of another technician, Floyd Mayweather, against Manny Pacquiao. So, let's just say, to sum up, right? I expect 2017 to be the year of Vladimir Klitschko and his fellow countrymen. I believe they're both from the Ukraine. Alexander Usyk. Right? Remember both of those names. I also expect by the end of the year, right, something big to happen in middleweight. Right? The winner of Golovkin Jacobs to be standing atop of that division after a blockbuster fight against Saul Alvarez. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Don't be bashful. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Let me just say, though, I do hope you stay hungry and stay foolish. Right? Food for thought. If it's good enough for the great Steve Jobs, that's good enough for me. Right? Don't worry about sounding sane. Sane would have you thinking of the UK in the EU or Jeb Bush or Hillary Clinton as President of the United States, right? Don't value looking sane as much as you value being true. Let's keep it real. I look forward to reading your real comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.